Hey guys, welcome back to the studio for part two of the graffiti project. And I know if you look over my shoulder here, you're gonna be like, but it's done. Yeah, guys, I just kind of got onto a bit of a roll. And any of you who are in any kind of a similar field where you are creating, you will know, much as I do, that when you get on a roll, man, you drive through that, there's no stopping nothing. Because getting on that roll is the hard part. Getting off of that roll and sidetracked, well, guys, yeah, it's a little too easy. So you just got to push on through, and I'm glad I did because, golly, she looks good, guys. But uh, you want to see how I did it, so get on to it. We're going to uh, get on through. I'm going to spew some knowledge as we get this guy to the finish stage. Alright guys, let's get into some color. Round two. And we're gonna start off with a little bit of real time for you guys. Kinda see how I start laying in my colors. I typically start from one edge and applying the 50-50 rule, start moving my way over to the other edge. Sometimes I will outline the shape entirely, but for this guys, I'm just kind of starting on one end and 50-50 rule. For those of you who do not know what the 50-50 rule is, every pass of paint that I'm laying down is about 50% over top of the pass that I just laid down. And here's a handy little tip guys. When you're working over a surface and you have potential of having your hose dragging across that surface, just loop it around your arm and that puts it as an extension of your body and you no longer have to worry about that hose dragging across the surface of your freshly painted project, marring it up and scratching it up. And guys, yep, I've done it. It's happened. So this is why I've kind of developed the little around the arm. Here we go again. And this is how I'm laying in this paint, guys. So with my yellows, oh, out of yellow, let's add some more. Um, with my yellows, I'm just starting again, one end, moving it over, 50-50, um, not trying to paint the whole piece, kind of doing one inch sections at a time, and then just tying them together with some blends. As you see, one inch, one side to the other, kind of doing the corners, working my way back, and then blending it all in together with a secondary coat. I left the tip of that a little uh, thin because I'm going to go back in with white in my tips of my arrows, so I'm not going to hit them so heavy. Um, keep in mind where you guys are laying down your paint. Rock on. Um, you start layering upon layering upon layering upon layering and believe it or not, this paint builds up and you can form ridges in your project. So once you get that clear coated, you'll look at it. You can actually see a wave in the clear coat where you can see a little ridge where your paint is higher than the previous surface. So. This is why pre-planning is pretty important, guys. Know what you're doing before you start. This is why I always got drawings. I always got reference. Making sure, making sure. Double checking, triple checking, guys. It's better to be safe than sorry. And, and having a very thorough idea of what I'm going to do. Now, again, there's a lot of things I've never done before. So sometimes you just got to throw caution to the wind and a lot of you beginners will be in that sanction where it's just all kind of, oh, I don't know what the next step is. I'm just going to try it. Yeah, that's what I done did too, guys. So trial and error is going to get you a lot further than hesitation. So do it. Make your mistakes, guys. As you've seen with my outline of this, it was not perfect. If you check out Below my bottom arrow, you'll see some yellow overspray where the paint has hit that seam. Guys, it ain't perfect. That'll have to be cleaned, but I'm not going to let it stress me out, guys. I'm just going to keep on rolling. All right, guys. So with this one, as you can probably see, I'm not blending any colors in my brush. And the reason being for this one, guys, is this is a throwback to the graffiti style. There is no mixing with spray bombs, guys. You're just going with the color that you got. So, with that being said, got my yellows mapped out. Got my reds mapped out. I'm going to go in with some oranges. Got to love those oranges. And we're going to tie this all together. Lastly, I'm going to go back in with some whites. And that will be the face of the letters done. 
And then we got the 3Ds. Oh yeah, those three dimensions. And this goes back to where I was saying, guys, you'll notice where I'm throwing in my orange, I've left a lot of that black. You know, I'm not trying to build up this paint too heavy. I know it can become a nightmare if you get it too thick and those ridges start to develop. Sanding and re-clearing and sanding and re-clearing and a lot of times is the only way to get rid of it. So as I'm going in with my orange, guys, I'm kind of doing a throwback fade as well. No, I'm not trying to fade this super nice as one blend into another. No, I'm doing some uh, more linear lines and blending the colors into one another. Again, just to kind of give it more of a linear look, the whole graffiti lines is what we're trying to achieve here. So that's how I done did it. All right, guys, and again, Keeping that paint pretty thin. Oh, I've got this one shot paint thinned out. Oh man, at least two thirds, at least two thirds of thinner and one third of paint, but it probably is a little bit over that. I'm still astonished at how much these paints needed to be thinned to flow through the airbrush. But hey guys, lesson learned and knowledge gained and let me pass it on down to you all. I hope you can learn a little something too should you decide that one shot is something you want to patooey spit through your airbrush. All right guys, I've gone back in with my red now and I'm just making those linear lines and those blends just a little more predominant. So I don't want it to, again, I don't want it to be very blendy and smooth transitions. I want it to show there's lines, lots of them. All right, guys, uh, once I get this red, and I know, I know you guys, the guys, all those guys tell me all the time on how often I say guys. <laughs> It's how I do. I'm sorry, it's very repetitive, guys. And I know, guys, if you hear it too many times, oh, hey, guys, check it out. That was my pooch. I've got a dog who frequents my garage, and every now and then, one of his little fur balls gets stuck in my paint. You saw me first try to blow it off with my airbrush, and then try to pick it off with the needle of my airbrush. Yeah, maybe not the best idea, but, you know, I moved over to the X-Acto knife, and that's what got that hair out of there. All right, guys, back to what I was elaborating on. I know I say guys a lot. Um is probably second in line. I'm no professional. I'm just a nutty little dude who's been spray bombing his entire life and was told no, <laughs> this was not my idea to do YouTube, Aaron. <laughs> my good buddy from RC Sparks, he threw me in this direction. Now, don't get me wrong, people. I am enjoying it thoroughly, dudes and dudettes. And I will come up with other phrases so I don't say guys all the time. But bear with me. I'm still relatively new. We're not even one year into this channel. And I'm learning so much. So much. And I hope. My hope is that you guys are too, because there's no other reason for me to be here. Yeah, I can sit here and talk to myself all day long. I do it anyways. Hey, there's some green. Going in with the 3Ds. The third dimensions. All right, making these letters pop off the project. Guys, you know me, I love that pop, and having that 3D edge is what's going to get it for me on this one. Um, So what I'm going to do here, and again, here's some real time, so you see me. I'm slowly doing that outline, slowly filling it in, you know, inch by inch, life's a cinch, mile by mile, you'll feel the trial. Mm, I'm pretty sure that's not how that goes. Yeah, well, out in the universe now, guys, can't take it back. All right, so as you see, filling it in, outlining it, filling it in, this is what I'm doing with the smaller sections instead of just working from one side to the other. It takes a while, guys. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not... I know time-lapse. I know time-lapse is very confusing, and it doesn't really show exactly what's being done here, but I just got so much I gotta throw onto these videos. I'm giving you guys everything, man. I, I'm not holding anything back. You're seeing... The only thing you're not seeing me do is fill up my cup with more paint. You, you're seeing every inch that's being applied. Some of it faster than others. <laughs> All right. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm just doing green to my side edges. 
and you'll see that little corner that I just did there, that little triangle, that's where the edges are sort of converging on one another. So we got green against green, but for any of my bottom edges, so you've got left and right side edges and then any of my bottom edges, I'm going to go in with a blue. And uh, once I wrap up these last little bits here, well, there you go. Here is the blue. And same thing, guys. All I am doing, dudes, uh, peoples, uh, my fellow airbrushers, airbrush wielding warriors, <laughs> all I am doing here is just blasting in a quick outline of the shape that needs to be filled in and then filling it in. And as you see, guys, 50-50 rule, I start on one side and always work my way to the other. And I'll come back in and do a couple passes. Um, everything that you see here, ah, another little hair in the way, everything that you see here, guys, is at least two passes of paint. Um, again, I know time-lapse doesn't really show you, but this is, this is two coats of my blue. Two coats of the green, red, orange, yellow, everything in here has been... And sometimes with the yellow, I actually do three coats in some of these areas to get that nice and bright. Um, here again, some real time so that you can see how much it takes. So, quick outline, making sure that those lines are nice and sharp to my outside. And once I got myself my little buffer... So now I can start filling it in and the reason why I have an outline and I call it a buffer is because if you're just going to do those lines top to bottom, top to bottom, top to bottom, well your tops and your bottoms are going to have obviously a jagged top to it. So if you outline that entire shape and then fill it in, your jagged tops where your passes are stopping and starting is no longer an issue. So there you guys see, that was one coat to map it in, two coats to fill it out and even a third just to make sure that color is nice and solid. So we're gonna blast through the last little bit of this, guys. We're getting pretty close to the end of this video. For the next one, I guess part three in the trunk series, I am going to outline this bad boy, every single line on this bad boy in black. Blacker than the blackest storm, compounded by the blackest night. Sailing in the blackest sea, crashing through the blackest waves, contemplating the blackest thoughts. Uh, yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> and speaking of thoughts, I just totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> Where were we? Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, I'm pretty sure we're pretty close to wrapping this one up. Again, just a little bit more uh, close-up speed version. I think we'll slow it down for you right away so you guys can kind of see one last little peek at how I do these little shapes and fill them in. But guys, let me know. What do you think? What did you learn? What can you teach me? Yeah, that's right. I just asked you. I'm here to learn as much as you guys are, guys. I learn something new every day, and this is what I love about my job. So please, if you have something that you're like, Ryan, my God, I could save you 20 minutes if you would have just done that. Throw it in the comments, guys. Tap those keys. Get me know what's going on inside your brain box as I fill it with new info. Pass on the favor, guys. I am a firm believer that every person on this planet can teach me something much as I can teach every person on this planet. It's reciprocal. You know what I'm saying, guys? So let me know. Throw it in the comments. Let me know what you think of this one. I know we've got one more video before wrap up. You've probably seen the speed version teaser, so you know what's to come. So stay tuned. All right, guys, and that's a wrap. I hope you learned a little something. Hey, did you think they learned? I think they learned a little something. Again, more to the actual graffiti style, mapping out the same way that I would do it, uh, they would do it if they were painting a wall. And guys, it's coming along nicely. All right, guys, and with that being said, as always, like, follow, subscribe. Thanks for coming along for the ride. Cheers. Part three is on its way. And be sure to check out some of my other content, guys. We've got beginner videos. We've got videos for hacks. I mean, hacks for airbrushing. And guys, thanks for being a part of this channel. Cheers.